Hello, TEDx Berlin. Broadcasting worldwide, no pressure then. <laughs> and it's fine up here as long as I don't actually look up. So if I have my eyes down, it's for my own um, well-being. Uh, my name's Simon Berry, and I'm going to talk to you um, about Cola Life. And Cola Life is based on three facts. The first fact is that you can buy a Coca-Cola virtually anywhere you go in the world, even the most remote parts of developing countries. The second fact is that one in five children uh, don't make it to their fifth birthday in developing countries. Now that's a figure that trips off the tongue really very easily, but let me draw a picture of that for you. Take a sample of 100 children, and if they're in Africa, uh, this, this is the number that won't make it to the age of five. That's an average. If you go to a rural area in an average country, it's even worse than that. And if you contrast that with a sample of children who are uh, born in, the, in, in Europe or the USA, the picture's like this. An unacceptable contrast. The third fact is that uh, that one in five before the age of five was a figure I had in my head when I was bumping around in a Land Rover in northeast Zambia, where there were two people per square kilometre, very high child mortality, yet wherever I stopped, it seemed, I was offered a Coca-Cola. This picture was taken a year or so ago in a, a rural health clinic in Uganda. This is the dr drug storeroom. Uh, now, you won't be able to read the labels on those shelves, as you can see, are empty, but they are for very, very basic but life-saving uh, medical items like oral rehydration salts, zinc tablets and so on. A recent survey done by WHO and um, Health Action International um, came up with a figure of 38%. 38%, that's the level of basic drugs availability that these clinics run on. Which in practical terms means that if you do walk to your nearest clinic or health centre, which actually may not be that near, you may have to uh, walk for several hours to get there, the chances are they will not have the medicine to make you or your child better. Contrast this with the private sector. R retail kiosks uh, don't necessarily run at 100% availability of Coca-Cola, cooking oil, talk time, and so on, but it's not far off, and it's a lot higher than 38%. So how is it that we can get this sort of product virtually anywhere, and yet we struggle so hard to get very basic medicines into rural clinics? So how does that Coca-Cola get to that really remote place? Well, we know that it starts its life in a bottling factory. That bottle goes into a crate. That crate goes onto a lorry like this, and off it goes. But that lorry doesn't get to that rural retailer. Uh, it only gets so far. And then a whole army of people take over. Uh, people on bicycles, people with mules, people with horse and carts, modified motorbikes, even hand carts. These are people who are making a living from taking that Coca-Cola that extra mile. If you look at Coca-Cola's balance sheet, you won't find a single mule you won't find a single modified motorbike or handcart. These are independent small businesses. But Coca-Cola gets to these places. There's money to be made by these people because people want Coca-Cola. The brand pulls the product into these really remote areas. And there's money to be made at every single step getting it there. Wouldn't it be absolutely fabulous if we could get that same pull for basic um, medicines? What's amazing about this distribution chain is that wherever the bottles go and wherever the crates go, this space goes. And Cola Life wants to use this unused space to get these simple medicines to exactly the same places that Coca-Cola gets to. And to do this, we've come up with this thing. We were calling it a pod. Uh, the BBC named it 
The BBC, I'm sure this will work itself out in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> the BBC named it a, a, an aid pod, and this is how it works. It clips down between the unused space in the bottles. Uh, you could get um, five of these pods in a, in a standard crate, and the, the crates are pretty standard. Um, when they get to the other end, the uh, pods come out, and the top comes off, and out come the, the social products, the really basic uh, medicines. So where have we got to? Um, what progress have we made? Well, I had this idea in 1988 um, when I was bouncing around the Land Rover where I took that um, picture of um, a slash and burn agriculture. But in those days, the only piece of communication technology I had was, was, was one of these. We had no telephone, no postal service. We just had this telex machine. And believe me, a telex machine is not a mass communication device. <laughs> you cannot convene thousands of people around what you think might be a good idea using a telex machine. So we failed, or I failed. And then the ear idea went on the shelf for a while while we came back to the UK with our children and they took over for a number of years. And then in April, um, two years ago, in 2008, I thought, I'm going to have another go at this idea. Um, I updated um, my data on uh, child mortality, and depressingly, it hadn't really changed, and set up a Facebook group. Um, but that isn't all I did. I went into uh, other online networks, and particularly onto the BBC's website, and started talking about the, the idea there. And the BBC took up the idea, uh, and a year later, in uh, April 2009, they did a, um, um, a, a quite a lengthy feature, uh, which, um, which features this clip. Now, the voices you're going to hear are Chris Valance from the BBC and Ewan Wilmshurst, who's my contact at global level in Coca-Cola. Ewan, you made that announcement. What actually are you planning to do? As part of a wider trial to look at our distribution system across East Africa, and in fact, ideally, in the long term globally, is to test the idea behind Cola Life, and that is to make use of our distribution system and certainly our distribution expertise to make available health products to people that need them. We're just looking for the right partners, people who are experts in, in healthcare products and healthcare product distribution. It's not our core business, so we need to make sure we have experts on, on site. And any sense of where you might do this trial? We'll start in Tanzania, probably around Dar es Salaam. The idea is if we can do it in a focused area, we'll get the learnings, what works, what doesn't work, and that ideally can be scaled. Are you confident that at some point this will become an established part of your business. Do you think that's a prospect? Is that a real prospect? If we get this right, it could well become a part of the way that we do business and certainly an expertise that we could share more widely. Now, bear in mind, at this point, we were a bunch of volunteers on Facebook. That guy is speaking for one of the biggest brands on the planet. So we were feeling pretty pleased with ourselves with that sort of statement. And it was at that point that I realised that this thing was going to have to move from a part-time cool campaign into actually trying to make something work on the ground. So we committed, my, part, my wife, shall I kill her partner, she, she insists I should call her my, my wife, uh, <laughs> my wife of 30 years decided that we were going to, we, we, we needed to commit to this full time and that's what we did from June. Three of us cycled across France in September and we raised enough money for a field trip to Zambia to talk, talk to people there about the possibility of a trial. So it's, it's, it's Zambia now, not, not Tanzania. Uh, we met with uh, 45 people while we were there. Uh, obviously, we, we, we prepared ourselves very well for it before we actually went. We met with 15 different organizations. We spoke to um, the uh, director level of the Ministry of Health, right down to mothers uh, bringing up small children, and everything in between, NGOs, local, national, big, small, and to the private sector as well. But before I um, tell you a bit more about um, our Zambia trip, let me pay, play you the latest public uh, statement, which also went out on the BBC. This went out last Monday. So Ewan, do you think it'll work? Can you see this happening? I think we, we know that in, in Zambia that the bottlers have had good initial discussions and are looking at the business case with Simon. I think we'll, we'll watch with interest. I know no decisions have been made yet. So I say, in the meantime, I think having engaged with, with Simon and Cola Life really over the last two years, along with other big health stakeholders and governments, we're very excited about what we've learned and will continue to learn from relationships like that. Uh. <laughs> 
n not a ringing endorsement, but actually precisely the sort of support or the level of support we need from Coca-Cola at this point. We don't want to be overwhelmed by Coca-Cola. We want to progress slowly. We want to build their trust and build the trust of all the stakeholders we're going to need to actually make this happen. So let me um, uh, tell you what happened in Zambia. Well, we met all those people, as I, I, as I said, and then we pulled um, a, a group of them together to talk about what a trial of, of the Cola Life idea might actually look like. And this is what um, we came up with. The focus is on reaching these women in, these, in the most remote places in Zambia. Uh, the, the reason for that is that it will never be economic, and now that sounds terrible when you talk about children's lives, but it will never be economic to put in a dedicated distribution system that reach the, reaches these places. If you've got a million dollars to spend on distributing um, basic medicines, you're going to do it in densely populated areas because you'll get more return for the money you invest. In these areas, the only option, I believe, is to actually piggyback on something that's already getting there. We're going to focus on, on these kits, these pods containing a diarrhea treatment kit. Now, that's a recommendation of WHO that every new mother should be given a diarrhea treatment kit and told how to use it when her child gets diarrhea. We're going to deliver through the pl private sector precisely the same distribution mechanism that Coca Cola and Cooking Oil and Talk Time goes through, not the public sector. We're going to ensure that everyone involved in that distribution chain isn't doing us a favour, but is doing it because they can make some money, just like they do when they're distributing Coca-Cola. These pods are going to go into the crates at wholesaler level. They'll get from the national centre to the wholesalers in cardboard boxes or similar, and then from there they'll be put into the crates. We're going to assess the ability of mothers to pay for these kits. They won't be able to pay very much but they will be able to pay something. On the basis of that and the margins that we need to make along that chain, we're going to inject subsidy at the, at the national level. Again, a, that is a well-rehearsed technique. The only thing that's new, really, oh, sorry, the final thing is we're going to obviously have a social marketing campaign so that mothers in these remote areas know what a diarrhea treatment kit is, know how to use it, and, 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 and why it's valuable. To, to, to pull the kit... Into, into these remote areas. Interestingly, interestingly, the only really new element to this is the pods in the crates to get the items that last mile. All the other elements are in place in one form or another. It's just a question of putting them together in a slightly different way. So, the aid pod. What would it contain? What would it be, would be made of? Well, the minimum um, uh, it, it would contain would be um, oral rehydration salts, and zinc supplements. That's the sort of basic treatment kit that WHO recommend. But actually, they also recommend that we need to make these things more attractive, more exciting. So we're thinking that there might be some soap in there, there might be condoms in there, there might be baby lotion even in there. But those are the sorts of things we're thinking about. So then, to, then we, we turn to the, the packaging. We want to make the packaging part of the product and, uh, and useful as well. So um, we think the... Um, the, the pod, which is half a litre in, in volume, could be used as a measuring jug. So those sachets would be, have, to, have to be half that size, so that you had one sachet um, to, fit, uh, to, to match the water that the, the pod would hold. Then that, go, then that leaves us with the water. And for years we've been challenged. Well, it's all very well, but you know, the reason these children are getting diarrhoea is because of the, the, the water supply. You're now going to mix all rehydration salts with the same water you know, so, so water I is an issue. Um, so we th we're looking at making the um, aid pod actually out of PET plastic. Now, PET plastic um, can be used in this technique called solar water disinfection. What you do is you put um, water into a clear PET bottle, you shake it up, you stick it on the roof for six hours, uh, the ultraviolet light from the sun goes through the plastic, damages the cell walls of, of the microorganisms you need to kill, and the heat, which is 30, between 30 and 50 degrees, is then enough to kill these bacteria. This is uh, a well-worked-out um, uh, uh, process. It's been um, used for uh, more than 15 years, and it's, it's quite popular in Asia. So we want to make the um, aid pod out of this pet plastic. So this is how, this, how it would then work. 
The mother would empty the contents of the pod. She'd fill it with the cleanest water she could uh, get hold of. She would shake it up and put it on the roof. And she'd leave it there for six hours. She would then bring it down, empty the whole sachet into the water, stir it up, and give it to the child. So what next? Well, we're now working hard to develop the detail of that plan that we started uh, developing together with our stakeholders in Zambia. We will go back to Zambia in, in January probably and finalize that plan, and then we'll take it to a funder to, to fund the pilot. We will then run the pilot live. We have used um, open innovation throughout um, the, the, the Cola Life process, so we'll be talking about what we're doing as we're doing it, so that people can pitch in and help us out if we get stuck or suggest a different avenues. It's an ongoing story. Numbers are important. We've only got the, the um, as far as we have, because we have so many enthusiastic supporters and voices around the world that are talking about Cola Life. It's a completely different place than when I was in that office with that telex machine. Numbers are really important, so please support us by joining a Facebook group and inviting your friends. Finally, I know that a lot of you will want one of these. If you leave by the side door, I'll leave you to work out which door that is for yourself, uh, we have a limited number of kits, and you can pick, take one, uh, take it away, but make it up, take a picture of it, put it online, and tell us about it. Thank you very much indeed.